Okay, so you have a presentation coming up or, or whatever and you want to create a Feynman diagram to show some particle interactions. Uh, Adobe Illustrator is a good tool. It makes it really easy not only because you can resize images to whatever your needs are, um, but once you create these special lines like a wavy line for a boson or a photon or a curly line for a gluon, uh, you can save these as brush strokes and so whenever you draw just straight lines for you know whatever interaction uh, you can select them and just apply those brush strokes and they become what you want them to be you can just use these over and over again so you only need to do what I'm gonna tell you today you only need to do this once and you can just save it and just use it over and over again so let's start from a blank document draw uh, a horizontal line you can hold down shift so that it's perfectly horizontal. Uh, go up to filter, down to distort, and over to zigzag. Now if you have preview turned on, it'll show you what it's going to do. Uh, let's create something like 12 pixels tall and uh, how about 13 of these. And instead of corner, which would be more like a resistor path, we'll set this to smooth so it's more like a, a sine wave and press OK. Now draw another horizontal line and highlight both of these and align them in the center so that they cross each other like so. Select the path, the curly path, and use the scissors tool and we're going to cut it at the intersect points. And because I have smart guides turned on uh, it tells me exactly where those intersect points are, so it's easy to cut them. So select the line, get rid of that, and what we've done with the scissors tool is we've cut it so that this sine wave starts over here and ends over here. So let's get rid of these endpoints, and let's shrink this down by quite a bit. Something like that. Maybe just a little bit more just a little bit more. That's fine. Now with the brush stroke toolbox open select the path and drop it into this little icon right here you'll see a plus sign. And When you drop it in a new brush toolbox or a little new brush window opens select new pattern brush and we can name this we'll call it wave and you can see the little path that you created show up in this far left little window box here. Press OK. And now if you draw a line going to another line, let's say it goes to a circle or something. We'll connect these here. If you select the line and you apply this brush, well now you have photon lines for whatever, whatever shape it is, whether it's a straight line or a circle and it, it looks good. So now next step is to create gluons. So these curly lines, we'll create them first starting from a circle. How about one that's a little fatter than it is tall? And we'll draw a horizontal line. We can move this down slightly select the circle, click the scissors tool, and cut at the intersection points. And so now what we have is a circle with its top cut off basically. And we can select that and get rid of that. Now select this path, press Alt, click on this anchor and snap it to this other anchor. Okay, so now use the lasso selection tool select the corner and we want to join these paths so press control J let me try that again sorry control J and a little window point uh, pops up and we want to join this corner so press OK and now we have a single path we can work with so select all of it and go up to filter uh, dis, uh, sorry, stylize and down to round corners 
and a radius of 10 pixels is fine. Let's do that. So now we have the curl, which is going to be useful. Next step we need to do is find the center of that curl and draw a horizontal line. Hold down Alt and Shift at the same time. What that does is that creates a horizontal line going in both directions. Select the curly path, go over to Scissors, and let's cut at the intersection point. Let me make sure I did this right. Cut at this intersect. And over here too. Okay, so we can get rid of the line, we can get rid of this upper path, and this one over here. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to make three copies of this. So press Alt on your keyboard, grab part of the path, move it over, and let's make one more copy just down here. Okay, select this first path. Let's cut with the scissors tool this at this bottom anchor. So it says path, path, path. We're going to, oh sorry, we're going to cut at this anchor. So what we've done is separated that. Let's delete that. And as for this one, let's use the scissors tool and cut over on this anchor. We can remove that. And now for this path down here, let's use the scissors tool. We'll cut at this anchor and that anchor. And we'll just delete those. Okay, so why did I create three of these? This is going to be this, the majority of the line, and these are going to be the beginning and the end of the line. So let's select all of these and let's shrink them down to a size that we might actually like. Uh, let's decrease their height just a little. Uh, maybe increase it just slightly and shrink those. Okay, so now take the middle one, the one with the single curl, select that and drop it onto the little new brush stroke. And This is a new pattern brush again. We're going to call this curl. Oops. Curl. And now we need to make this the beginning and the end of the line. Uh, let me show you what I mean. So if I select this and I apply this brush stroke, well, it doesn't look right. It doesn't attach correctly. So to fix that, we're going to make this the beginning of that brush stroke. So select this, press Alt on your keyboard, and you'll see a little plus sign, and also select this box. Drop it into this box specifically. So that's the, the second box from the right. Drop it in there. And now you see it show up in this box, and that's the beginning of your brush stroke. And now we need to create one for the end of your brush stroke. Press Alt, select it, and drop it into that box. And that's the end of your brush stroke. And press OK. So now if we click on this path and select that brush stroke, now it connects a whole lot better. So now you have both of the brush strokes that you need. Uh, I recommend creating your own palette so create these things once and you can use them over and over again so if you have a, if you keep a file like I do of just all these various uh, particle names and of all the lines and the brush strokes then when you press alt and click on any of these you can connect these into various diagrams and you can reuse these over and over again you can shrink and rotate these things uh, you can grab my uh, Feynman diagram palette at my website or you could create your own so that these look how you want them to. Otherwise that's it for today.